Hey everybody, it's Kaden here. So I want to show you guys a project that I'm working on, but before that, I'm kind of starving to that. Let's take care of that. Ah, uh -huh, nice, perfect. All right, so that takes care of me, but what about all of them? I bet they're hungry. Let's take care of that real quick. Hmm, I think this should do the trick. Let's take a look. Yes, look at all the bread falling. Everyone gets to eat today. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if we could do this in real life? Feed all the hungry people today that are not able to get food because of the whole COVID-19 crisis? Or even beyond the COVID-19 crisis? So, I actually have an idea. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so maybe we can't build a giant flying machine to deliver bread to everybody in Boston? That would be really cool. Uh, but what we can do is send out delivery trucks. So let me tell you more about um, this uh, project that I'm supporting and what my team is doing. My team B3 and I are partnering with an organization called Loving Spoonfuls in Boston. And what they do is they rescue food that would be thrown away in grocery stores and restaurants. And they deliver this food to shelters and places around Boston whose mission is to feed people who can't obtain food for themselves. So this food is rescued, it feeds people all over, of Boston, all over the Boston area, and the best part about it is they are continuing to do this even throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. This means that the people that are the most vulnerable during this pandemic, they get to eat, and that is amazing. So the way, they, the way that we are providing support is through donations. Right now our team is committed to raising $100,000 in order to keep their organization running. I personally committed to doing $1,000 and this is one of my ways of helping is through this YouTube video. So without any further ado, let's move on to the castle and I hope you stick around for a few more fun ideas. Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a quick run through the castle, I'm hoping this doesn't take too long. And I'll talk about more about the purpose of the castle and why I'm building it while I'm doing the run through. So the theme of the castle is kind of a gothic Victorian slash magic slash fantasy build. And a lot of the architecture, or at least some of the architecture, was inspired by a castle building tutorial series by a YouTuber called Bluner. I will post a link to his tutorial on the description of this video. Um, like I said earlier, this castle is still pretty much a work in progress. I have been able to complete the layout of the main building and the next stage is to do the detailing work in order to make it stand out and make it look awesome. The outer walls of the castle are finished and are detailed. That part was easier than I thought it was going to be and it looks amazing. And at this point only the front of the castle, the section that stands out here from the rest has been finished. And I am very pleased with how everything here came out. The front entryway, this uh, portcullis, I hope I pronounced that correctly. This is also something I took inspiration from Blue Nerd's castle building tutorial series. And I changed the styling on it to fit my build a little better. Uh, I also want to give a big shout out to my brother who helped me, his, he's been helping me and he has inspired a lot of the design for this castle as well. 
this is going to be our base on our survival realm when we finally finish building this thing it's gonna take ages to build this whole thing so at the front here I have used a door design by the bowtie man and let's see if I can flip the lever. let me just switch here if I flip this lever the door actually works um, a big fan of when you see something on a castle or on a build that it looks like it should work I want it to work so I definitely want to put all the rest on behind all the components of the castle that look like they will be worth that like that looked like you could interact with them so let me open this up i love this thing i will link a i will put the link to his tutorial on the video description as well the plan is i will be removing this lever from here and the gate will be operated from this room right here i will be Hiding the rest on a little bit better. And maybe in the entrance of the castle, maybe hide some way of activating it from the outside with a key or something like that. I have a few examples later on that I will show you. Okay, moving on, we have the cat the, the area here. will be a garden area uh, we're still debating on which lamp design to use for the front entrance we've come down to two designs that we want to use this one was made by my brother and this one I took inspiration from a YouTube video well, well not a YouTube video it was really a picture and I really like the design so if you guys like the left side or the right side, leave a comment in the video. Uh, leave a comment below, and uh, yeah, I'll take I'll take inspiration from what you guys choose. So during the design of this castle, the door that you see up here was pretty much at ground level, and it didn't look quite right because it looked like this huge structure was just sitting on the floor without some sort of base or support so I raised the structure of the castle by about um, I want to say uh, was it seven blocks or so it created a lot of room to, to add a basement into this castle and in order to tie the front entrance to the ground uh, I built this little section here that was inspired by my friend Darkseid um, and he took inspiration for uh, a similar design to this from a different video game. I forgot which video game it was. Uh, I'm very pleased with how it came out and it gives access into this awesome re uh, piston door that I designed for this castle specifically. It's a 3x6 piston door that I adapted. The original design is um, 4x6 and I love how fast this thing is. If I run straight at the door, it won't stop. It's a very fast piston door design. I may be making a tutorial on how to build this in a future video if this one does well enough. Okay, so I'm going to go really quick over the interior design since it's pretty much empty right now and kind of boring. So I'll pretty much be going over the layout. The castle is divided into the three wings. I will say the right hand side is the big tower, which has seven floors on it. The left hand side is kind of uh, a big house that sticks over out to the left, plus a tower. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna be using most of the space for in this castle yet. And the central wing has uh, this central staircase which is pretty much the central feature of the castle the castle itself was designed around this staircase that spirals around every one of the floors and connects all the sections together and it's got a little bit of a secret too that I will be sharing at the end of this video it's probably my favorite part about this design so on the left hand side, uh, as of this point, we only have a lot of empty rooms. 
at the very top it connects to the tower that you saw on the left hand side of the video and the other doors going downwards right now simply connect to other empty rooms that that are pretty much the, that encompass pretty much the left hand side of the castle On the right hand side we have the tower itself it will be having three entries into it the first two will not have any staircases connecting up and down in order to allow for a big room design yet again I don't have any particular purpose for these rooms as of yet that will be decided once we actually build the castle and give these rooms a little more purpose uh, but the first and second floors will be pretty much uh, the, they will not be connected to the rest of the tower in order to allow use for this big empty space um, pretty much to take full advantage of the room of the space in this room So my objective for that is that on the um, on the third floor, that will be the floor that has the spiral staircase that connects the rest of the floors in this tower. As you can see here, I will have one, two, three, four floors in this tower. And then we have the fifth one, which is the main one up top goes and has its own little observatory slash balcony up at the top and I'm not sure at this point whether I want to divide this into two more rooms it really feels kind of small as it is and we also have the roof here which could be used as another room I kind of like how the interior of this roof design looks might be doing I might do something interesting with this later as of right now there's no plans quickly going back into the main section of the castle there is a few other rooms that were created kind of by accident initially the staircase was only meant to go up to this door right here but because the roof of the castle ended up being so tall it allowed me for room for creating it, it allowed me to create a lot more rooms into the design so what i did is i just extended the spiral upwards and created a lot more rooms i have an additional room here and on top of the main entry hall i have an additional room here on top of the king's room and I have an ad yet another room on top of the main entryway. This section here was created because the roof for the center portion of this castle was so large it was going to be leaving a, a huge empty space. So I want to create some purpose for this area. I'm not sure what it will be yet. few more features on the design of this castle we have the king's room it will be in this section here it will have a nice huge king's chair in the middle perhaps with an entryway into a secret room that I will showcase later and large windows that provide a lot of light for the room this is also where it opens up into the back balcony that will be overlooking the ocean. This part is going to be amazing. One of the first things that I wanted to build, in fact the first thing that got built for this castle was the central staircase with this hidden room here. I made this um, secret flush with the wall 3x3 three three piston door that has a pretty much an access key system so when you throw the correct item at the floor here it picks it up and it opens up the door and gives you back the item so you can walk through and have access into the secret room for the castle as of right now this is the only example of a secret room that i have installed in the castle but my purpose is to add a few more of these rooms throughout the castle 
all right everyone that's pretty much all we have time for today if our fundraising campaign does well i will continue to make future video updates for the castle and if we manage to raise 50 dollars from this video i will figure out how to do a time lapse of the castle building process and that's not all everyone, if we can raise just $10, I will make a block by block tutorial of my castle piston door. I really like this design, it is an adaptation of my 4x6 piston door, which is really fast, I really like how this design works. And this one is a slight modification to make it narrower and also it has a timing circuit at the bottom to keep it open longer and if we make it to twenty dollars i will make a block by block tutorial of the hidden piston door and if we make it to fifty dollars aside from doing the time lapse of the castle i will also make a video on how to make my 25 furnace expandable mega furnace array this is very fast i've made a small adaptation and some changes on it from the hermitcraft server it has very quick item distribution and it works very nicely And if we make it to $100, I will provide a world download for this castle once it's all finished. And if you guys are more interested on other ways of supporting our cause, I will put a few links in the description of other online events that my friends are conducting to raise money for this cause. We have Broadway singing shows, we have pet pageants, cooking shows, and a whole lot more going on. So check on the video description for more. Thank you very much guys for watching and I will see you on the next time. Bye.